بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the Friday prayer and its rulings. So our author says the Friday prayer is fard on every Muslim in the following conditions if the following conditions are present. So he needs to be a male. It's fard upon a male. A free person, not a slave, this would apply in the medieval period and not in the modern era. He is a resident in a city or its outskirts according to the more correct opinion. He is not sick. He is a resident in a city or its outskirts according to the more correct opinion. So a resident in a city and its outskirts, what does this mean? A city is technically where you have a judiciary, you have barracks, you have markets, uh, you have access to amenities and you have civ- a, a civil structure. These are cities. Anything that doesn't have this are termed small hamlets or villages or the like. For example, in a village, you're not going to get a strong police presence. You're not going to get, uh, uh, you, you, you don't get markets in villages. You don't get things like that. Whereas in city, all of these things are there. So you have to be in a city to pray. And a city, a normal medieval walled city, has a wall around it. And even outside of the city, you have, like, people leave the city in the daytime to work outside. So, for example, uh, farmers may need to take their sheep outside of the city, right, into the, the paddocks and everything around the city. Certain crafts may need to leave the city to function more freely. You may need to slaughter animals outside the city. Right, certain jars, uh, carpenters, and, and, and it may take their uh, tools of the trade outside. They may chop wood from nearby and kind of chop them small, very near the city, then bring them in. All of this is technically considered the city. You may even get a village, right? You may get a village that is named another village, but it's in the area around the city. There are there are things happening that happen inside of a city in your area. You're surrounded by it. So even then, that is still considered part of the city. So in this instance, anything that is outside of the city, but connected to the city, even if it happens to be a village that's in the vicinity of the overspill of the city, is considered, the the ruling is the same ruling as applied to being in a city. He is not not a sick person. So you must be healthy. And what's meant, what's meant here is that nobody should be able, uh, you, you do not need the help of somebody in order to get to the mosque for the Friday, Friday prayer. You should be able to do it by yourself. Or you're going to get more sick if you go to the mosque. He is safe from any oppressor. So if there's sedation outside on the streets, there, there's, there's problems, there's anarchy, there's riots, or somebody is out to, to hunt for you, somebody's out to kill you, in this instance you don't need to go. He is not blind. Unless has someone to take him or he can get there by himself. So a blind person doesn't need to go to the, to the mosque to pray Salat al-Jum'ah. However, if this same blind person is able to go to the markets to do his daily shopping, or he's go to vi- he's, he can go safely to visit his friends and there's no fear of him injuring him as, himself, or he does that as part of his daily activity, then for sure he can get to the mosque also. And in that instance, he needs to get to the mosque on a Friday to pray. He is able to walk. So someone who's able to walk, someone who's on a wheelchair and needs someone to assist him, doesn't need to go. Someone who cannot walk unless he's assisted to, doesn't need to go. Or if it's raining, uh, heavy rain, snow or mud, this applies to the general uh, congregation prayer as well. So the conditions of its validity are the following. It is prayed within city limits or the outskirts around the city which we just mentioned. It is led by the ruler or one appointed by him. So what the uh, uh, imam means here is the Friday prayer is it's a very it's a prestigious prayer. It's a big prayer. It's normally done in the Friday mosque. It's done in the biggest mosque in your town. If your town's small, you'll only have one Friday mosque, right? So people leave their own mosque and travel a bit further to go to the main mosque for Jum'ah. Not every mosque hosts the Friday prayer, and in an instance like this, it can get problematic. Uh, if one imam wants to lead, another imam wants to lead, and pride could get involved, you know, bad feeling towards resentment towards other imams can get involved. So it's the, the job of the amir, the sultan, the governor, the khalifa, the king, to appoint an imam for the Friday prayers. And normally in Muslim countries, even the, the khutbas are scripted. 
right? Because countries that don't have freedoms, they, they even script the khutbah and give it, give it to them. They, they're authorized through the ministry that's responsible for this. And it's always checked. And then it's given on for the imam to, to read. So it's, it's a chain of command. So if it's not the ruler who's doing it, then it would be the, the, the ministry who's responsible for it. And then, then the local governor in the area. And then the chain of command goes down and they're all answerable back to the top. It is performed in the time of Dhuhr. So if you perform the Jum'ah before Dhuhr, obviously this is a replacement for the, uh, the, the, the Friday prayer, is a replacement for the Dhuhr prayer, so it, it cannot be performed before. And if it's performed afterwards, it's invalid. So if you were in the final sitting, you prayed your Jum'ah late, and you were in your final sitting, and the time for Asr kicked in, and you, know, you, you did your Tashahud, but you never got to say Salam. In this condition, your Jum'ah is broken, the jum is become non, null and void, and you pray the Dhuhr prayer, Qadha of the Dhuhr prayer, then you'd pray your Asr prayer because now you've totally missed your Jum'ah prayer. So it needs to be prayed within the time of Dhuhr prayer. It is preceded by a sermon done intentionally also in the time of Dhuhr. The presence of at least one person to listen to the sermon, that person being amongst those by whom the Friday prayer may be performed. So a person who doesn't have to pray the Friday prayer, who would that be? Somebody who's a traveller, somebody who's blind, somebody who's sick, people who can't make it to the mosque for these reasons. If they do happen to make it to the mosque, then they can lead people, people who are, it's obligatory upon, these people can lead them in prayer also. Some of the books say that at least three people need to be present during the sermon, so it's better to have three people and the imam is the four person, it's, 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 it's safer to do that when you're praying the Friday prayer. There needs to be a general permission. So what this means is that you can't, it's not a closed club. It's not like where you're, it's, it's for your family only, your, for family members, or you're at work and it's in a closed office, or something like this where it's only for yourselves. It, there needs to be a general permission that everybody can, can, can enter, and it's done publicly in the sense that it's an open Friday prayer where people are welcome to come and join and they must come and join if they, they if there's a Friday prayer in your area it's obligatory upon you you go and join unless there are safety issues for example you've got one mosque full to capacity and to get any more person in there is problematic and dangerous then obviously the guards would say okay nobody else can enter this is the first prayer after finishing the first prayer we're going to have a second Jum'ah in another hour and a half you're welcome to join that. Otherwise, it's, it's a, an openness, a general permissibility that everybody can enter. It's not a closed club, a Friday prayer. A congregation for the actual prayer, which is at least three men other than the Imam, even if they are slaves or travelers or sick people. The condition is that they remain in the prayer with the Imam until he performs the first sajda. That is, if they leave him alone, after he makes sajda, he completes the two units of the Friday prayer on his own. Otherwise, if they leave him before the sajda, the Friday prayer is broken, and he would pray the heart instead. Now, this is it's very rare that something like this would happen, but it's covered because it can happen. And where would this be applied? Let's, let's say you've got the imam and then you've got three people. Those three people pray behind the imam. The imam ma manages to do his first sajda, and one of them breaks his wudu, and one of them leaves. Now the condition is, is to have three people, right? So one of them's left. And in, or the second one, the same thing happens, right? Or for some rare situation, all three of this happens too. So now the imam is on his own, right? If this happens and the imam gets his first sajda in, then if they, get, if they leave, then the imam completes the prayer as if it's a Friday prayer and his Friday prayer is done. If... However, the people leave, right, before the first sajda, then the prayers become invalidated and the imam needs to basically pray dhuhr now, and then there's no jum'ah because he doesn't have a congregation. Any area that has an amir and a judge carrying out the law and establishing the had penal punishments is considered a valid city for the pri private prayer. So as mentioned earlier, the definition of a city is where you have a legal system being imposed upon everybody. In the jungles, it's not. In the forests, in the mountains, in hamlets far away from civilization, you don't have the overarching arm of the government reaching. 
right? It's only in cities where you have civilization. A city is a place where you have civilization. You have everything you need. You don't need to go out uh, from, that, from that city for anything. All your needs are met there. You can petition the government for something. They will respond to you. You can go to the police. You could go to the army. You could go to the judges. You could go to traders. This is what's known as a city. And obviously, the spillover outside the city is also considered part of the city. The minimum fard for a valid sermon is one tasbiha or tahliha. The sunnah is to perform two sermons with a sitting in between them in a state of purity while standing. So the minimum for the Jum'ah prayer uh, for the sermon to be uh, valid is one tasbiha, to say subhanallah. Uh, tahliha would be la ilaha illallah. So if this was said, this is enough. But the sunnah practice is to perform a khutbah with a sitting in between. Now the khutbah does not need to be so long that it causes problems for people. It needs to be a reasonable length. And the sitting needs to be a very short time. Some say, I think it's the amount of three subhanallahs or three verses of the Quran. It is wajib to hasten to the Friday prayer before the first adhan, leaving any sort of distraction not related to preparations for the prayer. So in some countries, they have an adhan before the time of Dhuhr starts. This Adhan is basically to inform people it's a Friday, so try to get, get ready for Friday and, and make your way to the mosques. But we're talking about here the, 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 the Adhan for the Friday prayer, and then you have a second Adhan given. So when the first Adhan for the Friday prayer goes, you should leave off. It becomes wajib for you now to leave everything and prepare for the mosque. So any, you leave off your trading, you leave off your buying and selling, you leave off your studying, you leave off university, everything that you're doing you leave off and you basically start to prepare, prepare for the mosque. When the imam emerges, rising to the mimbar, one should not pray or speak. It is prohibitively disliked to eat, drink, fiddle around or turn around during the sermon. It is also prohibitively disliked to leave the city after the idan without having prayed the Friday prayer. So when the imam shows himself and you can see he's, he's stood up and he's moving towards the mimbar, Everything that you can't do within a prayer, anything that, you, anything that you can't do within a prayer, you can no longer do when the imam is doing his recitation. So which basically means that you, you sit, you listen to him, you don't speak, you don't command the good, forbid the evil, you, you don't reply to a salam, you don't start to have a debate with anybody, you basically just listen. You don't eat, you don't drink, you just listen. And it's prohibitively disliked to leave the city after the Idhan without having prayed the Friday prayer. So once the Adhan for the private prayer, uh, once the Adhan for the Friday prayer goes, you read the Jum'ah Jum'a prayer, it's another 20 minutes, the khutbah will start, you pray the Jum'ah prayer and then you leave. Unless and unless you're part of a caravan that's not going to stop for you and it'll be extreme difficulty for you in catching up to it by yourself. And in today's age that would spill over into... Uh, timetable buses and aeroplanes and flights that, that are leaving. The Friday prayer takes the place of the Dhuhr prayer even for one excuse from attending like a traveler or a sick person. So in this case for example women, women don't have to pray the Friday prayer if they went to the mosque and prayed the Friday prayer it would take the position of the Dhuhr prayer likewise a traveler who doesn't need to pray, pray someone who's not a resident in one place for, for 15 days at least someone who is considered a traveller, and the sick, the extreme elderly, and the blind person, if they do make it to the mosque, and they do pray, the, the, the Jum'ah prayer takes the, takes over from the Friday prayer, and the Jum'ah prayer takes over from the Dhuhr prayer. Whoever joins the Friday prayer in the last sitting, or even the frustration of forgetfulness, should complete the prayer on his own as two units, i.e. it remains the Friday prayer and does not become Dhuhr. So even if you caught the Friday prayer just before the Imam was to say Salam, or if he were to do the prostration prayer and you caught him at that point, you, it's still considered that you're part, you caught the actual cycle and then you've entered the Jum'ah prayer and then you finish the two cycles by yourself and your Jum'ah prayer is accepted. If however you miss it, he says the, the two salams and then you arrive, then you've missed the Jum'ah prayer and then you pray the Dhuhr prayer. Some recommended acts for Fridays. Now Friday is it's a, it's it's an it's like an Eid. There's a great blessing. There's a great beauty to this day. There's great blessings to this day. There's a lot lot of light on this day, and there are many many recommended actions to be done on a Friday, from the preparation the night before, 
all the way to praying the Jum'ah and then the rest of the day until Maghrib time. And that in itself is uh, for another lecture. But a few things that we all can do on a Friday is wear our best clothes, have the Friday bath, apply perfume, send salawat on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam abundantly, read Surah Al-Ka'af and things like that. And we pray that Allah gives us the ability to make use of our Friday, Friday prayers as the great ulama and imams in the past have done. For example, Imam Ghazali in his book, uh, The Beginning of Guidance, recommends that you start from the asr of the day before. You start to plan. And he breaks down exactly what you're supposed to do. And then the early morning, the next day, what you're supposed to do all the way up to Jum'ah, up to Maghrib time. He, he tells you how to fill your time with acts of worship. Because truly, Friday is the best day right, for a Muslim in the week. And there's huge virtue in that day. And if we knew the virtues of that day, people would hasten to fulfill all of its obligations as is its due. And really, as Muslims, we're supposed to be fulfilling our obligations and giving everything its appropriate due in the way that it's supposed to be done. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi